and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing you to our brand new interactive die, ta-da, diorama. This die is so cool because it helps you create a three-dimensional card that also folds flat for easy mailing. We also have Tada Diorama hillside inserts that give you even more design options. And here is a look at what this awesome die does. So Tada Diorama! <laughs> it's so cool and so cute. These cards are just so much fun and they have such great dimension. But the amazing thing is, is that it folds completely flat for mailing. So it'll fit in a standard envelope with standard postage, which is so amazing. Here is one of the other cards that we're going to be creating in the video today. And oh my goodness, look at that incredible dimension. Isn't that so so cool. These are so much fun to create and they are so much fun to give people because they have such a wonderful surprise in them. And here is a look at another design. I love that you can create all sorts of cards with these for all different seasons and all different occasions. You can even do cool things like having characters flying with acetate. There's so many fun things that we're going to show you in the video today. So let's go ahead and get started and check out how to put the Tada diorama together. Here is a look at all of the pieces included in the Tada diorama. First up, we have our main piece and our side panels. We have these slot creators and a window creator too. We also have our inserts and bands. And then we included some fun extra die pieces in this set. So we have two little banners for adding your sentiment and then some cute clouds and a moon for helping set the scene in your cards. Now we also have the Tada Diorama hillside inserts, and these inserts are a different style of insert. You can see we have the hills going in either direction. They can be grass, snow, sand, ocean, anything in your imagination, and these are really fun to use, and we'll be showing you them in just a little bit. But first off, we're going to start off with our main piece, and to create the Tada Diorama, you're going to cut this piece two times. Then on one of them, you're gonna take the window creator and you're gonna center it into one of the panels. And I like to hold it in place with some low tack tape. And then we'll take this piece and we're gonna run it through the die cut machine. And that's gonna give us this piece that has a little window in it. And then you'll have a piece that doesn't have a window in it. And these are the two main pieces of your Tada diorama. We're gonna put those aside for now and we're gonna to start to work on our side panels. To create the Tada diorama, we're going to die cut this side panel piece twice. And you'll see in this side panel die that there are two score lines that the die creates for you. We're going to fold along those eventually, but not quite yet. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of these panels and just flip it over so that that way you have them facing in opposite directions. So just like this. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working with those slot creators. And you'll see that these slot creators actually face in opposite directions. And they kind of look like they have a little foot on them. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting them in between those two score lines and those little arrows there, those are going to point down to the bottom. That reminds you to line it up against the bottom and put it between the two score lines. It fits perfectly between them. The other thing that we're going to remember is that little foot is always going to point towards the bigger side of this panel. So you'll see how we have those little different score lines. The bigger part of the panel, that foot is going to point towards it. Once you have that between the two score lines, you've got that little foot there pointing towards that bigger panel. Then you can go ahead and hold it in place with some low tack tape. So here you can see that we have the same thing going on. The cool thing is, is you're always gonna know if you have it in the wrong direction because if that foot is pointing over to that smaller panel, that's not right. You want the foot to point towards the larger panel. So that's a really easy way to remember it. You don't even have to worry about which way they're turned or not. Just think my foot has to point to the larger panel and if it's not, that's okay. I'm gonna flip it over and try again. So now we're going to hold that one in place with some low tack tape and then we're going to run those through the die cut machine and you'll see that we're going to have these awesome little slots that are in perfect placement to create the Tada diorama. The next thing we're going to do is fold along those score lines that the die created for us and we are going to fold away from ourselves on all of these score lines. So you're going to fold that one back and then fold that one away from yourself. And I like to use a bone folder to reinforce these folds. It gives them a nice crisp edge which makes the interactive die work really well. So I, once again, I'm folding away from myself and then just reinforcing the fold and folding away from myself again. So both of these panels are going to have the same types of folds on them. 
the next thing that we need to do is add some adhesive. And so where we're going to be adding that is on that smallest panel right there. And so what I'm gonna do is take out a blue highlighter and just highlight where the adhesive's gonna go because it's a little bit easier to see than the tape runner. And I just like to use tape runner to create this to dot diorama. It makes it super easy and it works great. And so now I'm gonna take my tape runner there and add it right onto that smaller panel piece there, right where I have that highlighter on the other side of that score line. Now that we have our adhesive, we can go ahead and bring back that main base piece there, the one that didn't have the window cut from it, and this is where we're gonna be adhering our side panels onto. The next step is to fold this panel in half, making sure that the slots are at the bottom, and then all you need to do, you see the adhesives on the back there, is just line it up with the edge of this piece. It's super easy. You'll see that on the top and bottom, there's a little bit of that main base piece that's gonna stick out. That's actually exactly what you want. And the rest of it's gonna go exactly flush with that right edge. And then once you have that down, you can just press down and secure it. Now the great thing is the next one, we're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna make sure those slots are at the bottom. And all you're gonna have to do is just line it up with the other piece. And as soon as you have it lined up, then you can just go ahead and press down and secure it in place. So once you have one in place, you can just line up the other one and it's quick and easy. And now your side panels are on. Next up, we're going to use the insert piece. And here you see we've die cut it twice. And the insert piece has these little score lines. You can see them right there. And we're gonna fold back along those little score lines on both of these insert pieces. So you'll see there, it's nice and quick and easy. We're just gonna fold back along those on both sides. And the reason we're doing that is that helps us put them through the slots in the side panels. So there you'll see we're gonna use that back slot and we're just gonna feed it right through. And then once we've fed it through, we're actually gonna fold those little like T-shaped tab pieces back up cause that's gonna help hold it in place, just like that. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna feed it through the slot. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and open up those little T-shaped tabs and that's gonna secure it in place. Then we're gonna repeat the same thing with the other insert. So we're folding back along all of those tabs and then we can just add it in to the next slot. Once we have it through, we can open up those little T-shaped pieces to hold it in place. And then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So we'll feed it through that slot and then we can open up those little T-shaped tab pieces to hold it in place. And now you can start to see the Tada diorama begin to form. So we're gonna take this whole piece and we're gonna put it aside and we're actually gonna bring back that window piece that we created at the beginning and also our two band pieces. Now these two band pieces also have some score lines that we're gonna fold against and we're gonna fold back along those score lines. So you'll see there's a little score line there. We're gonna fold back and back and we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other one. So as you can see, we're always kind of doing two sides of this Tada diorama. And there I just showed you on the die where those score lines are that the die creates for you. And once again, we're gonna fold back along those. Now I'm gonna bring out my trusty highlighter again to show you where the adhesive is going to go, just to make it easier to see. And you'll see that it's gonna go on either side of those score lines that we just folded on both of these pieces. And once again, I'm just gonna be using Tape Runner. It works really easy with this and it holds it in place. So we're gonna add some Tape Runner above and below those score lines on both of these band pieces. Now that we've added our adhesive, what we're gonna do is take our window piece and we're gonna flip it over so that we're looking at the back. Then we'll take one band piece, we're gonna fold back those tabs, and we're gonna adhere this right there on the side panel. And you'll see that there's a notch on the window piece and a little notch in the band. And so you're gonna line those two up, just adding that band right in the center there. You don't need to worry about it being exactly perfect. You just want it to be along those two side panels and have those two rounded notches line up with each other, just like that. Then once we have those in place, we can press down and secure them. And then you can see that as you flip it over, you can't see the bands on the back, but then there they are. And that's how we're gonna be adding this front window to our Tada diorama. So here we have the window with the bands on the back, and then we have the piece that we were just working on. And what we're going to be doing is taking those side panels and feeding them through the bands. So there you can see I'm kind of pressing it up there so that we can feed that panel right through that band, just like that. 
once you've added that one side panel, you can go ahead and do the other one. So we're just gonna once again, feed it through that band. And the amazing thing now is that you've added your window onto the front of your Tada diorama and the whole thing has been created. So you'll see here that you can fold it completely flat. And then all you need to do is just pull at those little notches there. And as you pull these panels open, ta-da, you get this incredible scene that is so much fun to decorate. And the dimension on it is incredible. And the thing that I love about it is that it folds completely flat, but as you open up the panels, you get that really cool three-dimensional look. Oh my goodness, they are just so much fun to play with. I could play with them all day. Now the next step would be to add it to a card base. And this is my favorite way to do it. It's to create a card base the exact size of the Tada diorama, which is three and a quarter by four and a half. It creates a cute small card that I just love. But the other great thing is that you also can add the Tada diorama to a traditional A2 size card that's five and a half by four and a quarter. It creates this beautiful border all around and would be a really fun way to show off some pretty pattern paper or a fun stamped background. So you'll see I'm just gonna add some tape runner to the back of my whole Tada diorama piece and then I can just center it on to my A2 sized card. And the great thing is, is the mechanism works just as well. As we pull on those tabs, voila, you get all that incredible three dimension, but you can fold the whole thing flat and fit it in a standard envelope with standard postage, which I think is just so very cool. So here's another look at how the dimension pops up from the card, but then folds flat. Now I'm just gonna pop off my Tada diorama to show you how then you could put it on a smaller size card base. So it really just depends on the design that you're going for. So now we've got this cute little mini card. You still get that incredible three dimension and you still have a really great card that you can add your message to and you can pop the whole thing in the mail and surprise someone and make their day. So now I wanted to look at the Tada Diorama Hillside inserts. And the cool thing about these inserts is they work in the exact same way as the previous inserts. It has those little score lines on either side and we have the hills going in two different directions. So what I'm gonna do is actually just take off my front window and I'm just gonna remove my other panels. And that's how easy it is to kind of change things out and try different designs on the Tada Diorama. I can just take out my traditional insert that the Tada Diorama comes out with and I can go ahead and add in my hillside inserts. So just like we did before, we're gonna fold along those little tabs that the die creates for us on the top and bottom of either side. And then we can take these pieces and we can add them into the slots on our side panels, just like we did with that original insert. Once you add it through the slot, you can open up those little T-shaped tabs to make sure that we hold our insert piece in place. And then we'll repeat the same thing with the other hill. I like having the opposite hills in my design. I think that looks really nice. You can also mix and match the inserts. So you could use one of the original inserts mixed and matched with one of the hillsides. So we're folding those tabs back and we're adding them into the slot and then folding those tabs back open. And now we have those awesome hillside inserts inside of our Tada diorama. Then once again, we can just take our side panels and feed them through the bands on the window. So we've added one, and now we'll add the other, and then our Tada diorama will once again be complete and be just the coolest design. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. So now we've got this great little awesome three-dimensional scene with those great hills. We can fold it flat, and then all you need to do is just pull at those notches, and ta-da, we're gonna have this super, super cute, adorable little scene. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to create cards with this and to decorate with them, so let's go ahead and get started. So just like we did earlier, we're gonna start off with our main base piece. And we're gonna be die cutting this really pretty stripes and sprinkles paper. And this is gonna become the base for our Tada diorama. Then we're actually gonna take this paper and flip it over because there's a really great coordinating stipe on the back. And so we're gonna be die cutting that striped paper with that same main base piece. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out that window creator piece and we're gonna be die cutting the stripe piece with that. So we're just gonna take that and center it in the middle of our main piece and then we can hold it in place with some low tack tape and then run it through the die cut machine and that's gonna give us our really awesome window frame. We're gonna put these pieces aside and we're gonna start working on the side panels. And for the side panels, we're also gonna be using some really pretty pattern paper, this foiled paper, this color is called Polar, and we're gonna die cut that with this side panel piece. So we're gonna die cut the side panel two times out of this really pretty paper. 
Next, we're going to work with our slot creator pieces, and we're going to be lining them up on each of these side panels. And there are two of these slot creator pieces, and you'll see that they have these little arrows pointing down to remind you to line it up at the very bottom of your piece. And then we also have this little foot on them, and the foot is always going to point towards that larger panel. So there's those score lines there. You're going to line it up in between the score lines, and that little foot is going to point towards the larger panel. So right there, nope, that's the smaller panel. Just turn it around. So you can see there, that's the smaller one. All I have to say is make sure it points to the larger one. And as long as I remember that, I'm always gonna have those slot creators in the perfect position. So once I have that lined up in between those score lines and I have the foot pointed towards the larger panel, I can hold it in place with some low tack tape and then we can run both of these through the die cut machine. And now we'll have two side panels that have the slots in them perfectly placed. The next step is to fold along the score lines that the die created for us. And so we're going to fold back along those score lines, and then I like to reinforce it with a bone folder. So once again, we'll fold away from ourselves, just like that, and then on the second fold, away from ourselves again. Now it's time to add adhesive. We're gonna be adding it to that smallest panel there. So when we folded our side panels, we kind of created this little skinny panel and that's exactly where your adhesive is going to go. So I'm gonna add two strips there of my tape runner. And now we're gonna bring back that main base piece that we created earlier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our slots there, make sure those are at the bottom, make sure our piece is folded in half, and then we're just gonna line this up with the edge there of our main base piece. And we're gonna center it, and you'll see there'll be a little bit of the main base piece sticking up out of the top and the bottom, and that's in perfect placement. So now we can press down and secure that. The other really great thing now is this one is really easy to line up. We're gonna make sure the slots are at the bottom, our piece is folded in half, and then we're just gonna go ahead and butt this one up next to the other side panel, and that'll tell you that it's in perfect placement, and you can just press down and secure that piece. And now we have the beginning parts of our Tada diorama formed. Now for this diorama, I am obviously going for a winter theme. So I wanted to create some snowy hills. So I'm gonna use the Tada Diorama hillside inserts, and I'm gonna be die cutting some pixie dust cardstock to get that kind of frosty snowy look. The Tada diorama creates these little score lines there at the top and bottom of either side. And so we're gonna fold along those little score lines and that's gonna help us insert the hillside into the Tada diorama. So now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna feed it through the back slot. Once you've fed it through the slot, then you can open up those little folds and that'll help keep your hillside in place. Then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side, feeding the hillside through the slot and then opening up the T-shaped pieces to secure it. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other hillside. So we're gonna fold along all those little score lines and then we're gonna go ahead and put it through the next slot in the Tada diorama, opening up the little T-shaped pieces to secure it and then doing the same thing on the other side. And oh my goodness, this is looking so cute already. But now we're gonna work on the front piece again. So this is the one that we die cut earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna die cut this band piece and we're gonna be die cutting this twice. And I happen to have this polar paper on my desk, but you could also use some white cardstock for this too. I just have a tendency to use what's right next to me. So I went ahead and die cut these two bands. And on this die, there are some score lines and we're gonna fold along those score lines on both of the pieces. Then we're gonna take our tape runner and we're gonna add some adhesive above where we folded those score lines on both sides. So you'll see you'll have some adhesive at the top and at the bottom of the two bands. Then the next thing that we need to do is add these bands to the back of our frame. So I flip the frame over and now I'm just gonna line it up. So I'm gonna line it up top to bottom and then make sure that that little notch is lining up there on the band and my window piece. So I just kind of line up the notch and then make sure that it's nice and centered. Uh, it's just easy to eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect. So now that we've added the bands to our window frame piece, we're gonna bring back the rest of the Tada diorama that we've been working on. And you'll see we have the bands there. We're gonna actually feed the side panel through these bands. And then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side, attaching the window frame to the Tada diorama. And ta-da! We have our awesome three-dimensional diorama, and we're gonna be decorating it with the brand new Wild Wolf stamp set. And I, these wolves, I love them so much. They are so cute, and I love that they're perfect for both winter cards and Halloween cards too. And so I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of images from this super cute set, and now we're gonna start adding them into the ta-da diorama. 
So I'm gonna add some tape runner to the bottom of the pair of wolves and add them to that back hill. And they look so very cute there. Then to help add to the dimension, I like to add things to the background as well. And that's where I'm gonna be adding both the tree and the moon. So you'll see I'm actually putting that on the main base piece behind that back hill. And once I add that there, you really start to see this huge dimension that the Tada diorama creates. So now we're gonna add that cute little tree there. I'm just kind of checking it out to see how it looks. And of course, this beautiful wintry moon in the background too. And now you really start to feel that dimension. The next thing that I love to add dimension with is adding critters to the front hill. So I'm gonna take this cute little wolf pup here and put him down at the front. And you can see just how adorable this is. Then once I add them, everyone in there, I wanna make sure everything's closing and looking really good. And then I always like to test it out because these are so much fun to play with. So we're gonna open it up and voila, look how cute that is. Oh, it's so adorable. Now next up, I needed a sentiment for this super cute card. So I'm gonna bring out my snowball fight sentiment because I really like this happy winter in it. I'm gonna stamp it in River Ronk Ink, which is an alcohol marker friendly ink, but in this really pretty gray color. Then I'm gonna die cut it with a sentiment banner die. I'm gonna line it up with the edge and you'll see that the sentiment banner die is too long, but that's okay. There's a really easy way to make a custom banner sentiment size. So I'm gonna run that through the die cut machine and then we'll remove our tape and the die. And then we're just gonna take that right side of the die and line it up at the right side of the sentiment, just kind of matching what we did on the left side. So when we do that, that's gonna create this cute custom size. So we'll run that through the die cut machine and now we'll have this perfectly sized banner that we can layer onto the front of the card. Then I'm gonna take my markers and just color these letters in to coordinate with these beautiful pattern papers. I just love the gradient look on these letters. I think it just looks so pretty. Now for the sentiment, I like putting it on the outside of the box, again for that dimension. You could put it at the top or the bottom. I'm just kind of playing around to see what I like best. But I thought the bottom looked really nice. So I'm gonna add some tape runner to the sentiment and then just layer it on the bottom part of that kind of window frame there. And you can see by having something in the front, again, it's just kind of really showing the dimension in the card. So as we close it and we open it, we get this super, super cute look. So next up, I wanted to add one more little part of the sentiment. So I'm stamping out a speech bubble. This is from the stamp set Dad Jokes, but there are a bunch of speech bubbles in a bunch of our different sets. And then here is the brand new Simply Celebrate Winter Critters. And there's a Winter Critters add-on that has all of these cute little phrases. And they have one that says, love all of us. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and die cut the speech bubble first before I stamp in it. So I can make sure it's kind of at the perfect placement for my cute little wolf. And then I'm gonna stamp this sentiment in with some mermaid ink. And so what I'm imagining here is for this card is the wolves are me and my husband and my son Miles and he's going to be the one saying love from all of us which I think is so sweet for a winter card. So now we're going to go ahead and stamp in that mermaid ink into our speech bubble and then we can layer the speech bubble onto the card. And so I'm actually just going to layer that right onto the hill so that it looks like that little wolf is saying that. And I think that's just so cute and sweet. And now I'm just gonna test it again because it just makes me smile to play with this and look how cute that's looking. So at the beginning of the video, we talked about how you can put this on an A2 size card, a five and a half by four and a quarter, or you can make a mini card. And I decided to make a mini card for this one. And so I'm cutting my paper to six and a half by four and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to score at three and a quarter. And this is going to create a top full card that is the perfect size for my Tada diorama, which is four and a half by three and a quarter. So now I'm going to take my tape runner and add it to the card base and then I can layer the whole Tada diorama on top. And I think it's so fun that this card is on a card base and it folds completely flat but then has all of this dimension. So I like to flatten the whole thing just so that everything's nice and lined up and that makes it easier to put on top of the card base and layer those together. And now our card is all done and ta-da! You can see how cute this is. There is so much dimension. These are so easy to decorate and they are so much fun to decorate too. It's like you're making your own little perfect little diorama. 
The other thing that's really great about this is that it folds super flat. And guess what that means? It means that you can very easily mail this with standard envelope and standard postage. So I'm gonna put this here in my envelope and then I've decided to seal my envelope with my brand new washi tape here. And these little snowmen are just the cutest thing. I love them so much and they're such a great look for this wintry card. Then I could put my postage stamp, my address on here, mail it out and then when the recipient gets it and they open it up, oh my goodness, they are gonna get this incredible surprise. This is just so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. I love that it folds flat. I love that you can put a card base on it and that they are so easy to create and so much fun to decorate. So let's go ahead and get started on our next card. And this time we are gonna be working with a fall theme and we're gonna be doing some other fun things with the Tada Interactive. So we're gonna be starting off with some of the fruit salad paper here and we're gonna be using this really pretty blue gingham and we're gonna be die cutting the main base piece from this gingham. Then for the window piece, we're gonna be die cutting that main base piece again from some speckled eggshell cardstock, which always feels like fall to me. And then to create that window frame, we're gonna be using the window creator piece. We'll line it up in the center, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now we're gonna have our base piece and our window frame. Then for our side panels, we're going to be die cutting some wood grain cardstock, and we're gonna die cut the side panel twice. Then we're gonna take our frame and base piece and we're just gonna put those aside for now and we're gonna start working with the slot creators for the side panels. And just as we've done before, we're gonna look for the little foot on this die and we're gonna make sure the foot is pointed towards the bigger panel. So that's the skinnier panel, here's the bigger panel, we're gonna to point towards that panel. Once we have that in perfect placement there, we can hold it in place with some low tack tape and then repeat the same thing for the other side. Once again, making sure that we're pointed towards the bigger panel. So I'm just gonna flip it until this is in perfect placement. Then we can make sure the arrows are pointing down at the bottom, make sure it's lined up in between those score lines, hold it in place with some low tack tape, we'll run it through the die cut machine, and now we'll have slots created in both of our side panel pieces. Now it's time to fold along the score lines that the die created for us, and we're gonna be folding away from ourselves, and I like to use a bone folder to make sure that my folds are nice and sharp. And so we'll be doing that on both of the pieces, folding away from ourselves, and then just making sure we have some nice sharp crease folds. Then the next thing we're gonna do is take out that main base piece that we cut earlier, and we're gonna add some adhesive onto that skinniest panel there, right on the other side of that score line. And we're gonna be doing that on both of these side panels, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our slots are there at the bottom. We're gonna fold our piece in half, and then we're just gonna line it up with the outside edge of our main base piece. And you'll see we'll center it there so that there's a little bit of that blue gingham paper peeking out from the top and the bottom, and that's perfect placement right there, and then you can press down and secure it in place. Then for the next panel, it's really easy. Once again, we're gonna make sure the slots are at the bottom, we're gonna fold it in half, and then all you need to do is just butt it up against the other panel that you already added. That way you'll know it's already in perfect placement and you can just press down and secure that in place and you can see the Tada Interactive start to form. I'm going to be using the hillside inserts and we're gonna die cut that from some cilantro cardstock. And the hillside inserts create these little fold lines at the top and bottom of those tabs. So we're gonna fold along those score lines on both of our hillsides. Then we're gonna take one of the hillsides and feed it through the back slot and then open up those little tabs to help keep it in place. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll feed it through the slot and then we can open up those little tabs. Then we can take our second hill and do the same thing in the other slot. So we're gonna feed them through and then we'll open up those tabs to help secure it in place. And I just love the look of this bright green on that blue background, it's so pretty. Now we're gonna set that aside and start to work on our window frame here. So we're gonna take out the band pieces and we're gonna go ahead and die cut some of that same speckled eggshell cardstock, once again, because it's what I had on my desk, but you could use white cardstock too. And we're gonna die cut two of those bands. Now these bands have some score lines on them and we're gonna fold back along the score lines at the top and bottom of both of the bands. Then we'll take our tape runner and we're gonna add adhesive above those little folded lines that we just created on both the top and bottom of both of the bands. Then we can flip that window frame over and then line up the bands. So you'll see there's a notch on the window frame and a notch on the bands. We're just gonna line those up and then just center that right in place, just like that. Then we'll repeat on the other side. We'll line up the notches and then we can press down and secure it in place. 
Then we can bring back the Tada Interactive pieces we worked on earlier, and we can feed the side panels through those bands that we just created. And we're going to do that on both sides, attaching the window frame to the front of the Tada Interactive. And now you can see how great it's going to work. It folds flat, and then you open it up, and you get this great three-dimensional scene. Now to help decorate the set, we're going to take out the brand new Hey There Hay Rides, and we'll use some pumpkins, a sign, and that adorable little tractor. But then I thought it would be fun to bring back some of my favorite fall sets. So here we have scripty autumn sentiments just for some really pretty leaves. And then we're going to bring in Let's Go Nuts, which is such a cute set because it has these adorable little squirrels and also some more leaves too. And then we're also going to bring in Pick of the Patch, which is another cute squirrel themed set. And I love this idea of shopping your stash for cute fall sets and mixing and matching them, especially mixing and matching them with something new like that adorable tractor. So Pick of the Patch has this little pumpkin which you can put the critters inside and then add the little pumpkin top on top of them and I think this is just the cutest thing ever. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this adorable little squirrel inside the pumpkin. And right now I was inspired by a design by Elena to create this card, so thank you so much Elena. Now, this cute little tractor comes with a farmer and also a cute little chicken and a mouse that you can add to him, but you could shop your stash for other critters to see who might fit inside this tractor. And I thought this squirrel looked really, really cute driving the tractor, so I'm going to add him right there into this adorable little tractor. Then I'm going to add some tape runner behind a little row of pumpkins from the Hey There Hayride set and put this adorable little squirrel. I call him the Yay Squirrel because it looks like he's saying yay. And I like that he looks like he's jumping out from behind the pumpkins. Now I'm going to add the tractor into this card. And with my Tada dioramas, I like to add things on all of the layers. So I'm going to start in the way back against that back pattern paper panel. And I'm going to add the little tractor there. Then I'm going to take my cute yay squirrel and I'm going to layer him on the back hill there. So now we already have creating this dimension by having something all the way in the back and then something kind of in the middle. Then I always like to close my Tada diorama and make sure that everything is fitting really well and that it folds nice and flat. Then I'm going to open it back up and add my cute little squirrel and the pumpkin to the front. And then you'll see that I'm going to go and just move the guy in the back. See, he was a little bit too low, so now I'm just going to shift him up. And this is why I love to use Tape Runner, because it gives me that little wiggle room to be able to shift my characters and make sure that everything's really lining up nicely in this kind of like three-dimensional scene that we're creating. So now I can see all of my squirrels. Now one of the really fun things about this is also decorating the front. It gives the recipient a little clue as to what might be on the inside and it also gives you a ton of nice dimension because now you have now all of these layers. There's like four different layers going on. Now at this point was when I realized that I had wanted to add white gel pen lines to my images and I had forgotten to do it. So I went ahead and did all my cute little white gel pen lines and now I'm going to start layering more of my stamped images onto the frame. So I put some leaves all around so it looks like the leaves are maybe falling off the tree um, into this cute little scene. I'm going to add another squirrel and a big leaf over there and just kind of layer my images together. And what I love about this is you can just layer things however you like and it's going to look incredible. This theme is so cute. I also love that with the Tada Diorama, you can decorate it for any season, any holiday. Thank you, birthdays, year round. It's just so much fun because you can really make it your own. And I'm going to keep adding leaves to the front there and then also there to my little pumpkin guy just to kind of frame him up. Now, one of the other things that I like to do in Tada Dioramas is I like to add things behind the hill. So, so far we've just been adding things adhered to the front of the hill. You can also adhere things to the back of the hill. So here I'm going to put some adhesive on the front of these pumpkins and adhere it to the back of the back hill. And that gives some dimension too because we have pumpkins in the front of the hill and then pumpkins that look like they're tucked kind of behind that hill. I'm also going to add in that cute little sign and once again close it and make sure that everything is looking good and folding flat and this is just looking so cute. I'm going to add a little leaf there to the top of my pumpkin hat and then some more leaves in the corner. And also there's this little smoke that comes in the Hey There Hayride set for the tractor and so I thought that nicely filled in that upper right hand corner in the scene. Now these are the wavy sayings, and I love these because they have these great general sentiments, and I thought the thanks so much went really well with this fall theme. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that out, and then line up a wavy sentiment banner die over it, and run that through the die cut machine.
Now I've die cut this out of some white cardstock so that I can give it a fun age detail. And my favorite way to do that is to use antique linen distress ink. There's something about it that just gives it that perfect fall feel. So I'm gonna go along all of the edges of this die cut and give it that nice edged look. And you'll see that there's like no right or wrong way to do this. You can have a little bit more ink on one side, a little bit less on the other. It's just gonna really give it that amazing look. Then I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back of this, and this time I'm gonna put my sentiment up at the top. So I think it looks super cute either at the top or the bottom. You can even layer your sentiment onto that front hill too. And look how cute this is, it's so much fun. And right here I was looking at my design and I saw those leaves and I just didn't like how they were bunched up in the corner there. So I just kind of readjusted them onto my design um, until I liked it better. And I just like doing that. As I kind of keep looking at it, I make little changes and things and it just looks so cool. And now as we open Open it up, it goes, ta-da! Oh my goodness, how cute! Ah, I love all the little squirrels in there. I can't tell you how much fun these are to decorate. It's truly a joy. And look at all this dimension. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now for this card, I wanted to do an A2 size background. And so I decided to use the same pattern paper as I did on the base of the card. I just thought that would be a cool look, but you could also do a coordinating pattern paper as well. So I'm gonna take this paper here from the fruit salad collection and layer that onto an A2 size card base, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And then we're going to attach our Tada diorama in the same exact way that we did on the mini card. We're just gonna add some tape runner to the back and layer it on there. So I like to kind of put it all together and make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna add my tape runner all of the way around and then layer this whole thing on to my card base. And I really like when these are on the A2 card base because I feel like the dimension is like a really big pop. It's such a cool look and it gives it such a nice, beautiful frame. So here we're gonna layer that on and you can see how cute it is. I love the little sneak as to what might be inside on the front. And then as we open it up, you get this amazing surprise with the Hey There Hay Rides tractor and our cute little squirrels and all the pumpkins. You can see the incredible dimension that's on here. And my favorite part is that it folds so flat, which is just absolutely incredible. And so now it's time to add it to our envelope. This is a standard envelope. It's gonna take standard postage, but still have all of that dimension. And of course we have another brand new washi tape that is so cute with this. There's these cute little happy hedgehogs and they're so fun and it's just perfect for fall cards or really all year round too. You can see how flat that is. You could put your stamp on there, your address. And then when the recipient gets it and opens it up, it's just such a beautiful surprise. I always love thinking about what somebody is gonna just be so smiley when they get this card. I mean, look how how fun this is. I just love the pop and the fun three-dimensional diorama feel. These are such a blast to create. And next up, we are gonna create a Tada diorama with some new things on the front. We're gonna have a split sentiment on the front, some acetate, so let's go ahead and check that out. So for this next card, we're gonna go with this whole rainbow theme. And once again, this is what I love about the Tada diorama is that you can decorate it for any time of the year. And so we're gonna use some really rainbow paper and I'm gonna die cut that main base piece and also both of the side panels from that same striped paper that's gonna go along with our whole theme. Then we're gonna go ahead and put that main base piece aside and work on the slot creators. There you'll see we have those two score lines and we're gonna make sure that foot is pointed towards the bigger panel and then we're gonna hold that in place. Now that one's pointed towards the smaller panel so we're gonna flip our paper over. Now we have the foot pointed towards the bigger panel. We'll line it up between those two score lines, making sure those arrows are pointing down and then we can hold that in place with some low tack tape. And then we're gonna run both of these through the die cut machine and then we'll have our slots in perfect placement on both of of our side panels. Next, we're gonna fold along all of the score lines that the die created for us. And we're gonna fold away from ourselves and then reinforce those folds with a bone folder, just like that. So you'll see we'll do that on both of the panels. And just like before, we're gonna add our tape runner to that skinnier panel there on the other side of the fold that we just created. Then we're gonna take that main base piece again. We're gonna fold one of our panels in half, making sure the slots are at the bottom, and then we're gonna line that up with that outside edge there of our main base piece. Then for the second one, we'll fold in half, make sure the slots are at the bottom again, and then we can just butt it up against the other piece we already added, and then press down to secure it in place. Now for the next step, we're gonna do something just a little bit different because I was thinking, what if I wanted my front panels to be a different color than what ends up being the sides of the Tada diorama? And this is the way to do it. So we're gonna cut a piece that's gonna be four and a half by three and an eighth. 
Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to cut it in half and that's going to be at two and a quarter. And that's going to give us our two pieces that are going to perfectly cover up our panels. So now you'll see how this is going to work. We're going to add some tape runner to this piece and we're just going to layer it over top of the front panels. The front ones are the ones that you pull to go see the inside of the Tada diorama. So now we'll have a different color on the front than we have on the sides of our cool little awesome three-dimensional card. So I think this is just a really fun way to add another design to your card. You can either keep it the same like I did on the first two cards or you could bring in a whole nother pattern paper or even something that you inked or stamped on and layer it over top on the front. And so now I'm making sure that these line up really nicely and then I can just press down and secure that in place. Next, we're gonna work on our hillside inserts, and I'm gonna be using this brand new paper collection, Spiffier Speckles, that has this really beautiful gold foil on it. It's just stunning. And there is a white paper with a gold foil, and I thought it would be fun to do some ink blending on it. So I went ahead and die cut my awesome hillside inserts, and we're gonna now take out some celery stick lawn font ink, and also some freshly cut grass, and we're gonna be adding some ink onto these panels. So I'm giving them a base layer of the celery stick, and then I'm gonna go in with the freshly cut grass, and kind of brighten it up. And you'll see that I kind of keep adding ink onto it. I started off light and then I realized that I wanted it to be more of a bold color to go along with that bold rainbow and I kept layering up and just kind of brightening the whole thing. And I think this is so pretty because it has that gold foil on it but now I have this fun ink design over top. Oh, I am just in love with these. Now, just like before, we're going to fold along the little score lines on all of those tabs at the top and bottom on either side of both of these cool little hillsides. Then we can add them into the slots on those side panels there. So we'll feed that through and then we can open up those little tabs to secure them in place just like that. And then we can repeat that with the second slot there and the second hill. So we'll just feed it through and then open up those little T-shaped pieces to make sure everything is nice and secure. And now you can start to see this fun design form. Now we're gonna work on creating the window frame and I'm gonna use some of the 12 by 12 spiffier speckles in this really pretty purple color. And we're gonna die cut that main base piece and then we're gonna bring out the window creator and we'll center that, hold that in place with some low tack tape and then run that through the die cut machine. Then once we have our window, we can start to work on our band pieces. So I went ahead and die cut two bands out of some white cardstock, and then we're gonna fold along the score lines that the die creates for us. We'll fold back along those at the top and bottom of both of the bands. Once we have those folded, we can take our tape runner and we're gonna add adhesive above all of those little folds at the top and bottom of each of these bands. Then we can line them up with the sides of our window frame. So the notches are gonna line up, and then we can press down and secure it. Once again, we'll line the notches up, center it, and press down and secure it. And now we'll have our window frame with the bands, and we can take our side panels and feed those right through those bands. And then we'll feed the other side through. And now we can start to see our really cute Tada diorama form. And I love that these moving panels are a totally different pattern paper than the inside side panels. It's a really, really fun look. Next, I'm gonna take out the Just Plain Awesome stamp set because I think it's such a cute match to that rainbow notebook paper in the background. And so I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of images from this set. And this time we're gonna do another thing that's a little different. We're gonna use acetate. So I'm gonna trim down some acetate strips that are about a quarter inch wide and about three inches tall. They're longer than they need to be because I'm gonna trim them down once I see exactly where I wanna put them in. And this is a really cool way to feature different things into your Tada diorama that are maybe flying like our paper airplanes or if you want a lot of dimension oh it's so cool so I'm going to add this little mouse who's folding the paper airplanes on the front because he'll be kind of our little hint as to what's going on inside and then I'm going to put some tape runner at the top of that acetate strip and layer it behind my paper airplane mice so now I'll do that with the other one that I want to be flying through the air and I think this is just such a cool look it's just like a whole nother way to step up the Tada diorama so this little guy, we're gonna glue him behind that back hill. And so I just trimmed off some of the excess there that I had once I kind of saw what height he was gonna be. I'm gonna add some tape runner to the front of the acetate and I'm gonna layer that behind the hill and then just press that down to secure it. And I'm kind of looking through the frame to make sure that my cute little mouse is still in frame. I'm also gonna close my Tada diorama and make sure it's working and it totally is and it looks so cool. 
Now the same thing here, I'm kind of seeing where I want this guy to be and then I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off the excess of the acetate strip, add some adhesive to the front of that and then layer that behind the front hill. And so now we've got this great dimension with the back hill and the front hill and the acetate makes it feel like they're actually flying through the air. Once again, I'm going to close that down to make sure everything's working and then open it back up. Oh, and it's so fun. I love the whole rainbow stripe and I love that the frame brings in the purple of the rainbow. Now to help finish set the scene, I'm just going to add some of the papers there to the background and then I'm going to add some more paper airplanes to the front. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple because I really want all eyes on those cute little flying mice. And oh my goodness, this is looking so cute already. And now for the sentiment on the front, I'm actually going to be using my Magic Messages stamp set. This is the More Magic Messages and it is so super cute. And these Magic Messages are a perfect fit for these front panels. So I went ahead and stamped and colored and die cut this sentiment. And I'm gonna be using this on the front. And to do that, I am going to be actually cutting this whole circle in half because I want the sentiment to split open. So you could do a sentiment here you could have a whole scene split open and I'll show you some design team cards in just a little bit that do that. There's so many cool ways that you can use these like split open panels. But here you can see, I'm just gonna trim this piece in half and that way I'll be able to layer it on to my panels. And I just love this idea of the sentiment splitting open. I think it's just gonna look so cool. You could also stamp your sentiment on there. You could use a die cut like I did here. You could even create a little scene that would kind of break open and then reveal the rest of the scene inside. There are so many cool ways that you can use this Sada diorama. And in just a little bit, I'll show you a bunch of design team samples. So here I'm adding tape runner to the two halves of my circle. I'm gonna make sure my card is nice and flat. I'm gonna kind of butt the two halves up together and then press them down because I want to make sure that everything is lined up really, really well. And then my last step for this card is to add the card base. And in this case, I decided to do a mini card base again. So that's going to be the three and a quarter by four and a half. So I went ahead and just scored that. We'll add some tape runner to the front of that card base. And then we can layer our whole Tada diorama over top. And now this card is all done and oh my goodness, how cool is it when that sentiment kind of cracks in half and then reveals the scene on the inside? Oh my goodness, and then all the dimension with the acetate and then all the different colored pattern paper on the front. This card was so much fun to create and it's just so cool. I love that there's so many fun things that you can do with the Tada diorama. It's so cute and so sweet. And I love that even with all this dimension, it can still fold flat and fit in an envelope. And of course, I'm gonna put my beautiful little paper airplane washi tape over there there where you can send it off to the recipient with normal postage and when they open it up they are going to just be wowed and oh my goodness I mean this is just so much fun these are so much fun to create and they are so much fun to send people to and next up I can't wait to show you these incredible cards by the design team and first up this card by Grace is amazing I love how she has the scene on the front and then the awesome beautiful fall mouse theme in the inside it's just amazing I was just blown away by how Myra created this beautiful scene on the front and then when you open it up the scene just extends to the back. I think this is just beautiful. This card by Mimi is so much fun. I love that she has a whole scene on the front that splits in half to reveal her super cute winter birds on the inside. I just love how Callie stamped her sentiment onto the panels and as you open it up you get this great reveal into this super cute holiday scene. Audrey here shows that this Tada Interactive is perfect for Halloween cards, and as you open it up, you get this super sweet little spooky scene. I am just in love with Renata's card. The bright colors are so beautiful, and I love how it opens up to reveal this scene that feels like it has so dimension, including a flying butterfly. I absolutely love Maureen's squirrel card and how she kind of layered things all around the frame, and then as you open it up, you get this super cute scene that just makes me smile. This card by Callie is so much fun. I love that Snowball Fight is a great match for the Tada Interactive. Megan is so creative and she turned the Tada diorama into an apple and as it opens, you see the little worm inside. How cute and fun is this? And then this card by Francesca is so sweet. I love her soft colors and as it opens up, you see the beautiful little penguin scene inside. Here, Rebecca shows us that the Tada diorama is also great for fall cards, and I love when you open it up, you get the super cute new tractor from Hey There Hay Rides. This card by Samantha is so much fun. I love how she combines so many favorite Halloween sets and that she has the whole thing upside down so the bats can hang upside down. 
I love Rebecca's traditional red and green card, and as you open it up, you get the super cute little kissing mice underneath the mistletoe. Here we have these adorable dinos by Samantha. Oh my goodness, I just love them. As you open it up, you get the rest of their little party scene. And then here is the card by Elena that inspired me to make mine. I just love her cute little squirrel scene so much. Shari got really creative and she die cut a different shaped window and also has her bats hanging upside down, which is just so cool. Letitia's colorful pumpkins and gourds have such a great dimension in her beautiful card. And then this card by Yanea is just so much fun. She used brand new washi tape at the top and the bottom and created such a cute little scene inside. So we cannot wait to see what you guys are going to create with Tada Diorama, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!